This time on Rad Rat Video, we are splicing together the ultimate skater Frankenstein style. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel about skateboarding in all of its forms. I talk about skateboarding uh, in every form that I can come up with. Games, videos, movies, if I can get away with it. But that's difficult with copyright stuff. But anyway... Let's get into some questions. First is from Little Nepotiz, who says, Hey, Radrat, this might be a weird or dumb question, but are flip tricks still called the same thing if you don't ollie beforehand? For example, if you were to just drop down from, let's say, a five-foot flat ledge without ollieing in midair, do a kickflip before landing, is it still a kickflip? And how about doing a flip trick mid-hand plan with just your feet? P.S. The Daywon song painting I bought from you a while ago had hairs on it, so I collected them for DNA extraction and cloning, but I need your legal consent. Thanks. Yeah, I painted this picture of, uh, of Daywon song. I was trying to figure out different things I could put in my store. Uh, this ended up not being something I pursued, but I did sell one painting. If you want to clone the hair that's in there, it is likely a paintbrush bristle. Or it could be my dog. If so, you can clone them, but just give me a copy so they can like play with each other and chase each other around in the yard. If it's me, I don't care. Do what you want. Um, but as far as your trick or your question about tricks, is it called the same thing if you don't ollie? So if you drop off some kind of a, a ledge and in the air you flick and you do a, a kickflip, it'd just be a late front foot kickflip. And... The reason why it's not the same thing is because uh, the technique is much different. You know, as as you do like a kickflip on flat, you pop and you slide your foot up to start the the ollie part, and then you flick the nose and you flick off the nose so that the board will flatten out. You know, but if you're gonna do it uh, just as you're falling, you just have to hit down. You know, and not on the nose, but like as close to the the the, the center as possible so it doesn't flop. And that would do your late kickflip. And so, you know, like, it's, it's a different technique. It gets a little bit blurry when you're talking about vert, though. Because vert, you don't really ollie. Like, you don't pop the tail and, like, push off of the wall on vert. You just kind of, like, just kind of push. You push off slightly. And you just kind of come off of the, the coping. You don't really have to pop the tail in the same type of way. And so sometimes I remember Lincoln uh, Lincoln Ueda did a back foot heel flip on on vert, and it, it was like it didn't look like you would think it, it would on on flat. And it was a sequence in Trans World, and I have looked for it before because I've talked about it before. I have not been able to find it. I don't know if there's a clip of it uh, uh, from a video either. I just saw a sequence, but like he comes up. And then he kicks out, and the board is way out here. He it flips about halfway, and then he catches it, and then he pulls it back. So like I can't even imagine how that looked in in motion. It was probably pretty weird. But the exact timing of a flip on on vert, like it's it doesn't really matter if you pop and flick like you would on on street. That'd be a, a kick flip. But if you like kind of came out of the coping and you waited just a hair, and then you flipped it, that'd still be a kick flip. But if you waited just a little bit longer than it's a late flip, like that, that could get a little bit confusing. But for the most part, uh, you're just talking about a late flip. Oh, and the hand hand plant thing, I would just I, I would call that the trick. Um, it who was it? Richie Jackson did like where he would grab his board and like roll over and then do like a like push the board up and flip it and catch it back on his feet then grab it and roll back over and and actually land the trick yeah like that's not going to come up often enough that you need to come up with a different name for a trick kick flip tray flip whatever i think that would be that would be fine it's not really late because there's no timing to it necessarily you know all right, next question is from Gerard, who asks, what trick do you think looks best for flipping into manuals, and which trick do you think looks best for flipping out? My answer would be a fakie three shove for flipping in, and a switch or nollie flip for flipping out of manuals. To me, a varial heel flip in is probably one of the coolest that you can do, and it might just be because you don't see it often, so it's kind of surprising, you know? But, like, if you do it to the tail, you kind of... Like, that is cool because the board doesn't naturally want to do that. Like, you, you don't tend to catch it, you know, tail heavy. 
So you ha kind of have to tweak the way that the trick flips so that you can land on, on the tail or doing it on the nose would be a little bit more natural, I think, but it still looks cool. I don't know. You just don't see it too often. And I think it looks cool doing it both ways to do a trick out tray is kind of an obvious answer, but I think an impossible would be super cool too. Uh, you, you don't, again, don't see that as often. But it's cool because the height of an impossible doesn't really depend on how much you can pop it. As long as you can get the scoop started, if you can get right here, you can get the board as high as you want. So, like, uh, you know, if you're coming to the end, the board's kind of high, but you get that little bit of pop, and then you can pull it up anyway. And I think that looks really cool. Um, that's one of my, I like to see that trick anyway. But doing it out of a manual would always be really good. Um, doing a hard flip. Um, I would think would be kind of the worst because I, the times that I've seen it, which is not that often, but the times I've seen it into a, a manual, it hasn't looked good. Um, and I think it's just like, it's kind of an awkward trick. If you can do it really cleanly, it looks cool. But if you're trying to do it and land and, and balance, like it's tough. Um, there's one I saw that I'm thinking of where he, he did the hard flip and it was flat and he didn't land perfectly straight. He had to like land and pivot slightly into the into the his balance, you know? And um, that looked cool. But it was cool because I could tell how hard it was. And it didn't necessarily just look cool because of the symmetry of the flip or anything like that, if that makes any sense. All right, next question. Uh, Two-parter from Lam who says with positivity being spread in the skate community, is there any chance for rivalries coming back and should it? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, things aren't always that positive. Uh, you can easily get on the bad side of people and start a battle. Um, like when I, what my video where uh, Kelly Hart, I felt insulted by something he, he said to me and we've worked it all out now. If you haven't seen all those, we're fine. We're cool. Um, people like took that and went crazy with it, like cutting out clips, uh, like these three seconds of something to send to me or to send to, to him or, you know, like commenting on my stuff or his stuff and taking sides and calling each other out. And like, it became kind of a big deal. And it was a few days and like, we had to talk and like, Hey, is everything going to be cool? Can we, you know, and like the two of us were fine. I, I didn't like the stuff that he said, but I, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, but it became a big deal because of all of the comments and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think it's really easy to start a feud with somebody, um, really really quick even if you didn't even intend to so i'm not sure what you mean with that but let's get into your second part here uh how to properly um, motivate as well as educate new skaters for example my friend tried to heel flip but kept pulling his front foot back he planted his back foot on the ground the whole time and the board motion turned into a casper heel if my friend gets hyped because he thought that trick was difficult should i uh should i lie and tell him it's super sick or just tell him what i really think um that one is a bit complicated so i've i've talked a lot about how the skill potential has changed throughout time. You know, like if you first started skating in 1990 versus you first started skating in 2020, you'll probably get better starting now or, or 2020 um, because you have more access to see stuff. You know what tricks have been done. You've seen, you can have access to see a lot more styles and more techniques and you can learn from different people you can go online and you can see tricks broken down and explained if you started in the 90s it would be a lot harder you'd have to just know people and just learn by doing and so it'd be harder to reach a higher skill um and so like your friend needs to know what's possible and what tricks can be done so i wouldn't let him think that he invented something crazy I would just show him what that trick could look like, you know, and just kind of help him along the path of seeing like, yeah, you can do that. You know, the basic heel flip you're trying to do, like, let's get that because we got to do all these other tricks before we can start like really pushing it. And I think that's helpful, you know? So 
Uh, but I, it's 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 hard to not put because you want to feel good. You skateboarding is really hard. You can be working on it for weeks, months, and not be able to do that heel flip yet. And if you feel like you did something cool, you don't want to be shot down and say like, no, that actually really sucked. Anyone could do that. Um, so you got to be careful. You don't want to, you know, make sure they make sure they're not too heartbroken <laughs> that their trick wasn't that big of a deal. But to actually help them with the trick, I would film it. That seems like a pretty basic thing that you could do now. Uh, when I was first starting, like I'd have to get out my camera that would be like this and like waste a tape to to see it, and then I couldn't even see it there. Uh, I'd have to take the tape inside. Like it was it was a big deal when I first started skating. But now you can just film it and be like, hey, see how your foot's hitting the ground super quick? You don't want that. Um, which is the same thing that happened to me. So when I was first trying to learn how to kickflip, I could land with either my front foot or my back foot, and I was just thinking at some point it's gonna happen that I'm gonna land with both. So, but when I realized what was actually happening, uh, that didn't make any sense. So I could either pop the tail, slide this foot off and plan it. And then my, with my front foot, I, I could flick and I could even catch it. I got to a point where I could catch with my front foot, a kick flip, but my back foot's been on the ground the whole time. And I would land like this, or I could pop, I could flick down, plant this foot, the, the board f finishes the flip. And then I land with just my back foot on it. And I was thinking like, I can land front foot. I can land back foot. I'm just going to keep doing these back and forth. And eventually I'm going to land with both. No, I was not really jumping. I was just kind of popping up the board as I hopped back. I wasn't really getting up into the air, uh, which is I'm sure what your what is going on with your friend. So if you can film him and show him like your foot is on the ground immediately, there's zero chance of you landing it at that point. You have to jump. You got to pull those feet up. So good luck with that. You know him better than I do. So you should know more how to make sure he doesn't get uh, upset <laughs> by being corrected too much. All right. Next question is from Steez God 69 420, who says you are a Rad Rattenstein scientist and it is your life's goal to create the world's greatest skateboarder. Which two skaters from any era, past or present, would you combine together to make the ultimate skateboarder? Would you go with a combination of Rodney Mullen and Nigel Houston to make the most unbeatably consistent and daring yet insanely innovative skater to ever live? Or maybe the smooth style of Tom Penny combined with the intricate skills of someone like your good old friend Chris Haslam? Which two styles do you think would complement one another and make the, the most and make the ultimate full send machine possible? Ronnie Mullen and Nigel Houston are a really good combo, but I won't use that because you just did. Um, I think having Rodney Mullen in it is essential. Like his brilliance is hard to even comprehend. You know, like the fact that he would go to a contest in 1982, let's say, come home, like see what other skaters are, are up to, go home, to the other side of the country, because he was in Florida, right? Uh, in skate in a barn, he would invent tricks that we still do, and then come back the next year and just be like way beyond what everyone else had done. Like the idea that he could just do that and he could come up with stuff and he could figure everything out and get really consistent with it too. Um, I can't imagine what that would be like right now. Like if he was ten right now and he was just getting started. Um, I can't imagine what his future career would look like, starting with what we know now, what all the tricks we have access to right now, that level of brilliance being put into skateboarding right now, um, that could be something special. But if we can mix him with somebody, I would say Jamie Foy, because he's as far apart as I could imagine as far as like street skating. Um, so, you know, huge gaps and long handrails and, and, and speed and all, all that kind of stuff. I, if we could splice those two together, I think it would make an incredible skater. I, I wonder if it would be possible to have them be good at him. I guess it'd be one person be good at both, like as good at both things, or if he'd be half as good at both styles. So instead of doing a crazy long handrail, It'd be like a less crazy handrail, but now there'd be a flip in or it'd be a dark slide or something like that. I don't know, 
But if that were, were possible, and I'm gonna check into it, can you just scoop out parts of someone's brain? Where is the skateboarding brilliance center of the brain? And could I scoop it out of somebody and put it into somebody else? I'm gonna check into that. But that's it for now. If you got a question of your own, go to radratvideo.com and you could submit it there. Uh, there's a form on the homepage to fill out. If you like the channel, you can support it by subscribing and uh, sending this video to your friends, telling your friends about something else you've liked on the channel. You can join here on YouTube. You can uh, sponsor on Patreon as well. Um, or you can just kick back and enjoy uh, the stuff I've got coming for you in the future. But that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out.